why the Gripen is one of the world's best fighter jets. That's today's topic. My name is Max Willman. I'm a former fighter pilot in the Swedish Air Force and let's go. Yes, it is fair to say that I am a bit biased when it comes to the Gripen fighter, but still, today we are reacting to a video by Saab, the manufacturer of Gripen, uh, explaining why the Gripen is so good uh, as a fighter jet. So let's jump over to the video and see what it's all about, and I will give you my comments as we go along. Sound of freedom. From the outset, Gripen has been designed to execute operations in harsh environments and from dispersed air bases. The key to operational effect is to get fighters airborne when needed. That's why Gripen is designed to make sure... And it's actually quite a good view of a typical Swedish road base. You have a taxiway here with several places where you can have fighters standing by and then you can taxi in and out to basically a normal road that's been made very, very straight for a bit more than a kilometer, a bit more than 1000 meters. Uh, so you can have very dispersed operations. You can have the fighters hiding, so to speak, in the forest. And then as they are about to get airborne for an attack mission, for example, they can taxi out. And you also have several places uh, for fighters in higher readiness when it comes to uh, launching them for combat air patrols or fighter escorts or whatever. Uh, so it's very, very difficult for an opponent to be able to uh, target these fighters because... They can be in so many, many different locations. There's so many, you would have to send so many missiles on different locations. And most of those locations will be without any fighters. And also, uh, the Gripen was designed like this from the beginning, because this is the old Swedish uh, concept of dispersed operations, where every fighter wing have uh, reserve uh, runways and also uh, extra road bases in the vicinity. So they could taxi or they could take off and land at several different locations for each airfield, which is a great way to make sure it's very, very difficult for an opponent to keep track on everything. Uh, and as you see here, uh, two uh, Meteor missiles and two AMRAMs on this Gripen. Uh, so quite a good air-to-air uh, -air loadout and you can almost see another uh, Gripen up here in one of the uh, places. To make sure that availability is maximized at all times. Gripen can operate from a road strip of only 16 by 800 meters. This means... And that's very, very short compared to uh, normal NATO standards, for example. And when I talked about more than 1,000 meters, you have also a little bit of extra room um, at the end, which, is, which can be quite much uh, more narrow than 16 meters, but uh, typically it's a little bit more than, than 800 meters. And here you're loading the uh, uh, cannon. Um, the 27 millimeter Mauser cannon in the Gripen. The fighter can be deployed from extremely short or battle damage runways, taxiways, small civil airfields, or even highways. Gripen has been designed for minimum turnaround time. For example, an air to air combat setup, including refueling and rearming, is done in less than 10 minutes. And what you need. Uh, apart from the airplane and the field is of course that the technicians are trained in this way so you have technician uh, concepts where you have uh, cars you saw that with with um, with weapons in the back so to speak you have uh, refueling trucks that can drive around so you also need uh, training and equipment apart from the fighter and runways of course if you're supposed to be able to utilize this using only one technician and five conscript mechanics Equipped with efficient and smart tools and equipment. All grip and equipment. Here's another typical example of a Swedish road base. You have a normal road here, which is basically the taxiway. And then you have a couple of places where you can place aircraft. Some of them are larger, like this one. And some of them are much, much smaller than this one. And if the, you see the runway uh, in the end here. So you have uh, 800 meters here, a minimum 60 meters. And then you have a smaller way on the front and the back. And you have dispersal uh, places where you can park the aircraft here on the other side of the airfield and also typically along uh, the forest. So if an enemy wants to destroy uh, aircraft here, he has to send a lot of missiles to a lot of different places if he's to uh, securely destroy these um, 
this aircraft. So it's, it takes quite a lot of uh, uh, intelligence for the enemy uh, when it comes to ISR capabilities and also able to uh, shoot those missiles so far. So it's, it's very difficult to do. And here you see uh, examples of uh, uh, the technicians. So we have basically a pickup truck or, or a small, uh, yeah, pickup trucks basically uh, with uh, where they can place weapons in the back uh, and uh, they have their tools with them uh, you have also normal trucks with um, with more weapons and you have a refueling truck so there's not much infrastructure that you need when it comes to this sort of uh, dispersed operations and if you like this video please consider giving me a thumbs up and a subscription and also comment below if you want me to comment on anything else uh, another video for example going forward back to the video equipment for maintenance and turnaround at squadron level are deployable for operations at temporary air bases the equipment needed fits in a single standard 20 foot container Grip and fighters can be airborne right after the scramble signal, requiring only engine start and final automatic startup tests. So, an ending there with the sound of freedom. So, yeah, this gives us uh, quite a good view of how the Gripen can operate under austere conditions. And obviously, this would be perfect for Ukraine and because uh, the Russians would have to keep ISR capabilities on so many different fields and so many different places on these fields if they were to effectively uh, trying to target these fighters on the ground. So, when you have all these this dispersion capabilities and uh, airfields it's very very difficult for the enemy and also for you you can easily create a concept where you move technicians around from place to place you don't need to have infrastructure or technicians at every base instead you can different days open up different bases and make sure that the enemy is always guessing what's going on obviously this requires a good network of communications between technicians and uh, the flight staff the air staff uh, so that they are in good contact with each other so that they can utilize this concept to its fullest but it creates a lot of uh, uh, yeah, very very difficult dilemmas for the enemy he can't keep tabs on all the airfields so it, uh, it's a very, very good concept and it doesn't require that many people either if they are well trained and you can use uh, conscripts uh, as we do in Sweden all the time uh, you need uh, one uh, technician that's very, very highly trained but um, a lot of the manpower can actually be done by conscripts that are trained in quite short um, uh, times so i'll end it there thank you so much for staying until the end please give me a thumbs up like the video before you go and subscribe and if you want to share this video with someone who might think it's uh, entertaining or uh, interesting please do that and also comment below what you want me to comment on next or do a video about going forward but until next time this is max fly safe